welcome to UGC EPG Patshala. Hello, I'm Dr. Pooja Chaudhary Mehtani, teaching at Department of Geography, Dayal Singh College, University of Delhi. Today, I'll talk about channel morphology, in which we will be talking about meaning of channels, factors affecting channels, channel classification, hydraulic geometry of channels and lastly channel stability and movement. Let us now first talk about channel morphology. The study of channels related aspects like channel pattern, channel geometry and the factors controlling these forms is called channel morphology. The factors that govern and affect the channel are the processes by which a channel is modified. The channel morphology includes studying the network of tributaries that join to the main river channel within the drainage basin. Channel development is controlled by two factors. Firstly, water flow or discharge in terms of volume and velocity and secondly sediment movement. These two factors are governed by the channel slope or gradient. The channel gradient varies from steep to gentle slope depending on the altitudinal variation that a channel is crossing by. The mutual interrelationship of these parameters may be qualitatively uh, described by the Lane's principle, also known as the Lane's relationship. It states that the product of the sediment load and bed grain size is proportional to the product of discharge and channel slope. Let us now discuss the meaning of channel. The term channel is used in context of defining part of a water body that is narrow such as a river or a strait. Thus, in physical geography, channel can be defined as the path of a river or a stream outlined by its bed and banks. The whole system of river channels with its joining branches in the form of tributaries that dissect the earth's surface is in proportion to the valley size. Channels are occupied by permanent streams, those that flow throughout the year, some have intermittent streams and some have ephemeral streams which are active only during and after the rains. Although the water of the river flows in its channel but during floods the water flow exceeds and the capacity of the channel and the water spills out of the channel over flood plains causing floods. The term channel is often taken as synonymous for the term strait that is defined as a relatively narrow body of water that connects two larger bodies of water. In this nautical context, the term strait, channel and passage are used interchangeably. For example, in archipelago, the water between islands is typically called a channel or passage. For example, the English channel is the strait between England and France. We shall now see the channel structure. Channel structure consists of channel banks, channel bed and tholbeck. The channel bed is the main path taken by the river through which it flows. Channel banks, these are the two sides of the river bed and these are called as the left channel bank and the right channel bank. Tholbeck, it is continuous line that joins the lowest points in a stream channel. Now, let us see what are the factors that control channel morphology. There are three set of factors that control channel morphological aspects such as channel pattern, channel movement. First set of factors are called as independent factors. Second are dependent factors and third are boundary related factors, independent factors. These are the factors 
that are imposed on the watershed. These are related to landscape aspects and control channel morphology such as geology, climate and human as shown in the figure. The geology of a watershed is determined by process acting at the landscape and can include endogenetic processes such as volcanoes and tectonics and to a lesser extent surface processes such as erosion, deposition. Within a watershed, these processes control the distribution, structure and type of bedrock, surfacial materials and topography. Climate is also regarded an independent factor at the landscape scale as it is decisive in controlling the amount of rainfall and water flow in stream channel. Human action is the third factor under independent variable that affects the landscape and can also significantly alter the watershed conditions. The geologic conditions, the climatic factors and human conditions to which a watershed is subjected determines the dependent landscape variables of sediment supply, stream discharge and vegetation. An additional important independent variable is time. The second set of factors are independent factors. These are those variables that respond and adjust to the independent conditions. Channel morphology is the result of combined influence of these dependent landscape variables and the channel responses to the changes in these variables by adjustment in one or many of the dependent channel variables as it is also depicted in the figure. Sediment supply is determined by frequency volume and caliber of material delivered to the channel. Stream discharge includes the frequency, magnitude and duration of stream flows. The variability in stream discharge both temporally and spatially exerts a large influence on channel morphology. The third variable that influences channel is riparian vegetation as that controls banks erodibility as well as near bank hydraulic conditions and is also a source of in channel large woody debris also called as LWD. Classic models depicted channel morphology as primarily a function of stream flow and sediment transport rate where transport rate equals sediment supply for equilibrium conditions but those models did not explain the role of vegetation or other boundary conditions which play a crucial role in determining channel morphology. Besides riparian vegetation important boundary conditions include elements found within the stream channel as well as those that may influence the channel's ability to migrate laterally and build vertically. With this we talk about third set of factors, boundary related factors. The boundary conditions include channel gradient that is controlled by valley slope as the maximum possible gradient that a stream channel can have is dependent on valley slopes and bank composition and also structure which influences banks erodibility as determined by sedimentology and geotechnical properties of the material bounding the channels. Bedrock and other known erodible units such as co-alluvial material, compactals and lag glaciofluvial deposits which may limit lateral and vertical channel migration and determine stream channel alignment 
and erodible sediment stored in valley bottoms, in flood plains, fans or terraces. These include alluvial sediments, laxurine, marine and glacial outwash deposits and human channel alterations such as bridge crossings and flood protection works. These boundary conditions are primarily influenced by the geomorphic history of the landscape as well as history of human intervention. The current morphology of a stream is therefore a product of both present day and historic watershed processes. All these factors together affect the various aspects of channels such as channel width, channel depth, bed slope, grain size and sediment load. After having a look at all these factors that affect channel morphology, now let us see how do we classify the channels. The channels can be classified into different categories based on different criteria. These criteria include the constituent material of river channel and secondly shape or pattern of the river channel. The pattern of the channel is described as channel form. Channel exists in a variety of forms. There are a wide variety of stream channels based on its forms such as single thread sinus rivers, wandering rivers or meandering river channels, braided river channels, etc. that are enclosed by the materials of its bed and banks. First, let's discuss the classification based on the constituent material. These can be divided into two categories, the bedrock channels. When the river bed has cover of rocks rather than the sediment cover, and the river erodes into the rock. These are called as bedrock channels. These are the channels that flow through non-erodible materials, for example, bedrock, coarse colluvium, and non-erodible glacial deposits and their boundary conditions and to dominate the channel morphology. This type of channel usually has a limited sediment supply and a morphology that is largely determined by the structure and composition of the material through which it flows. Bedrock channels, for example, frequently run along strong faults or other geologic planes of weakness within the rock. Overall, these channels are relatively insensitive to disturbances including disturbances from changes occurring upstream such as the channel that is relative stable. But bedrock channels are very effective at transferring disturbances from upstream to downstream reaches. The second category of channels based on the constituent material are alluvial channels. When the river cuts the river transported rock debris or alluvium, these are referred to as the alluvium channels. These channels are more regular. Besides the simple classification, there are other classifications based on the constituent material of the channels. These include Scombs classification that who has proposed a more detailed channel classification that includes three categories. First, bedrock channel, second, semi-controlled channels and thirdly, alluvial channel. But this classification was found to be not addressing the variable geotechnical properties associated with the landforms. To address this, Keller Halls et al. has suggested another categorization that is based on the materials that determine channel bed and bank strength and the channel's threshold of erodibility. Based on this, three categories of materials constituting channels 
could be identified first non erodible material channels semi erodible material channels and thirdly erodible material channels although these terms have also been objective and as opposed to the conventional non alluvial and alluvial are more useful but by definition these are contradictory as all alluvial material is erodible and many non alluvial materials are also highly erodible such as marine and glacial fluvial deposits similarly some alluvial materials are far less erodible than others for instance armored channel beds developed by fluvial processes are much more resistant to movement than other alluvium such as gravel bar deposits which are rearranged on an annual basis after talking about the channels that are based on constituting material now let's see the other classification which is based on the shape assumed by the river channel called as planform pattern so the classification based of river channels on pattern in the words of leopold channel pattern is used to describe the plan view of a reach of river as seen from an airplane and includes meandering braiding or relatively straight channels natural channel characteristically exhibit alternating pools of deep reaches and riffles or shallow reaches regardless of the type of pattern the shape of channel is largely decided by the sinuosity of the river sinuosity refers to the ratio of the measured channel distance divided by the straight line distance of the valley from the beginning of the channel reach to the end of the channel reach based on this pattern rivers have been class river channels have been classified by mollard he identified 17 planform channels types that were related to both the physiographic environment in which channels flowed and the materials that made up the channel bed and banks played an important role he based this channel pattern classification on the factors controlling morphology specifically stream flow sediment supply the relative dominance of fluvial transport processes and the materials within which the channel is formed church has classified channel plat patterns on the basis of the caliber and volume of sediment supply that in turn decides the sinuosity of the river channel he has separated the patterns into phases of river channel flow during the upper course to lower course related to how the supplied sediment gets transported on a more simplistic scale channels can be categorized into four types based on the pattern taken by the river channel first is straight river channel for channels with moderate sized bed material such as gravel and streams channels with moderate sediment supply usually have a straight river channel sinus river channels these are those channels that have slight bends with the increase in the sediment load the channel of these types are called sinus river channels thirdly are the meandered river channels as the supply of sediments exceeds the channel's capacity to transport the additional sediments the channel may take a zigzag shape called as meandering channel the channel may break into two or more individual channels when the channel is not too active it can divide and recombine around stable vegetated islands these are called as wandering channels 
and lastly are the braided river channels. In other situations, the channel becomes too active for stable vegetated islands to develop and this river system divides into numerous individual channels that divide and recombine around unstable gravel bars. These are called braided channels. Anastomizing river channels are streams that are similar to braided river channels in that they consist of multiple intertwining channels but they typically consist of a network of low gradient narrow deep channels with stable bank. This is all about different types of river channels based on the pattern. After having a look at channel patterns, let us understand the hydraulic geometry of stream channels. The analysis of the relationship among stream discharge, channel shape, sediment load and the slope has been called as hydraulic geometry of stream channels. Gauging stations around the world maintained by the respective governments make recordings along the rivers all over the world. At these stations, the water surface level, channel shape, velocity, amount of dissolved and suspended minerals and other variables are periodically recorded. These records provide a detailed history of river flow. L.B. Leopold and Thomas Maddock published an elaborate analysis of thousands of measurements from stream gauging stations all over the world. It was they who called their analysis of the relationship among stream discharge, channel slope, sediment load and slope as hydraulic geometry of stream channels. To understand the hydraulic geometry of stream channels, there is a need to study the changes in the following four parameters. These four parameters include firstly channel width and channel depth, secondly stream velocity, thirdly suspended load and at different gauging stations under varying conditions spanning from low flow to bank full discharge and flood. These parameters increase as some small positive power function of discharge based on the equations as shown in the figure. The figure that shows various equations also show the numerical values that has arithmetic constants A, C and K that are not very significant for the hydraulic geometry of stream channels. They are constants of pro proportionality that convert a given value and discharge into the equivalent values of width, depth and velocity. The numerical values of the exponents B, F and M are very important as they describe the changes of width, depth and velocity for a specified change of discharge and are very crucial. During flood, the water rises and stream channel has width, depth, current, velocity all increase at the gauging stations. This clearly supports and gives evidence that during the flood situation, as the regularity of the average changes drastically. In a downstream direction, the changes in a channel shape and stream velocity are more significant as was emphasized by Leopold and Maddow. River discharge in humid area increases downstream. They proved that as mean discharge of a river increases downstream, channel width, channel depth, and mean current velocity all increase. Leopold and Maddock showed that not only the affluent rivers get both wider and deeper as they grow larger downstream, but against the popular belief, they also proved that averages current velocity and increases downstream. This is because 
of the high velocity current in, a, in the upper course of the river as it flows in circular eddies with background backward as well as forward eddies. The various numerical values of the three exponents B, F and M that describe the variations in width, depth and velocity of the variable discharge at gauging stations are not the same as those that describe downstream increases in width, depth and velocity with progressively increasing mean around discharge. Leopold and Maddox said that in downstream direction, the channel width increases most rapidly with mean annual discharges as the square root of the discharge. Depth next most rapidly and mean velocity increases only slightly in the downstream direction. Leopold and Maddox proposed that the increasing depth downstream permits more efficient flow in a river and compensates for the decreasing slope, thus providing a slight wet increase in velocity at mean annual discharge. Thus, the channel width, depth and velocity change with the stream flow and against the popular belief, the velocity increases, though only slightly in the downstream direction. In the last section, Let's understand about channel stability and movement. Channel stability refers to the channel's propensity for vertical or lateral movement. Channel stability keeps on changing as the sediment gets deposited or gets carried away. These deposits can be either on the banks of the stream or in channel deposits, resulting into alteration in channel patterns. Detectable changes in channel patterns indicate important changes in both the watershed and the factors controlling morphology. Researchers can use the evidence of channel changes as proposed by geomorphologists as an indicator of the environment health of the watershed. Each channel type responds differently to changes in sediment supply or discharge. These responses can be of two types, including either vertical shifts, called as agradation or degradation, as visible in the upward or downward position of the channel bed, and or lateral shift that is called as the sideways movement of the bed banks. It is evident by old or abandoned channels on a flood plain. Now let's talk about the first kind of channel movement, vertical channel shifts. Channel width to depth ratio keeps on changing along with the variation in the sediment load vis-a-vis -vis transportation capacity as there comes an increase in sediment supply beyond the transport capacity of the river. Sediments tend to get deposited and this is referred to as aggradation. It leads to an increase in the width to depth ratio of the channel and the level of channel stability decreases. This is clearly visible in the aerial view of river channel where one can see an increase in the size and extent of sediment depositions within the channel over time. In the cases where the sediment supply is less than the transportation capacity of the river, sediments are washed away. This results in degradation of the channel. The second movement is Lateral channel movement, displacement of the channel laterally across a valley, flat surface also indicates variation in the conditions upstream. Lateral movement is often caused by either progressive bank erosion or channel evolution. Progressive bank erosion is the result of sediment aggradation within the channel or can occur simply from natural meandering processes. Whereas, unlike channel erosion, channel evolution is usually a relatively sudden and major shift in the position of the channel to a new part of the floodplain. 
called as the first order avulsion. A sudden reoccupation of an old channel on the flat plane, which is known as the second order avulsion, or a relatively minor switching of channels within a braided channel or other similarly active channel called as third order avulsion. Lateral channel movement influences the riparian zone, which is the zone of interface between the land and a river channel, eroding some areas and building up others. The channel boundary conditions and the relationship between the stream and the valley through which it flows will determine the limit of lateral channel movement if there are no constraints imposed such as valley confinement, bridges or dikes and the valley that is filled with erodible material then the channel is usually capable of eroding across the entire extent of the flood plain. Wherever valley width exceeds channel width, a potential for lateral channel movement exists and its confined system in which the valley is only marginally wider, the extent of lateral movement is limited. In forested valleys, the additional bank strength provided by riparian vegetation can limit lateral channel movement and enable stable channels morphology to exist in the environment in which it is otherwise may not prominent. Changes in the patterns of in-channel sediment, shortage storage in the bars and islands are often an early indicator of future channel problems. So we can conclude by saying that braided channels are amongst the most active of all the stream channels characterized by rapid lateral migration rates and often undergoing net vertical aggradation. That's all for this session on channel morphology. Thank you.